1989. More than 38 years had passed since oil was discovered in North Dakota when energy leaders, elected officials, and the public gathered in Williston to celebrate a major milestone, the production of the first cumulative billionth barrel of crude oil produced in North Dakota. The state had ridden its fair share of booms and busts, but a new technique was showing promise. Two years prior, Meridian Burlington Oil deployed horizontal drilling in the upper Bakken Shale for the first time and it spurred new activity that continued throughout the early 90s. Continental Resources was an early adopter of horizontal drilling and had opened the Cedar Hills field in southwest North Dakota, which was the first significant horizontally drilled commercial oil field in North Dakota in the 1990s. Big field, biggest field we'd ever been involved with, biggest, I mean, it's 250 million barrel field, that's huge. The question was, what are you gonna do for an encore? Where do you go? It was then that they realized oil wasn't in the upper Bakken, as previously believed, but rather the middle Bakken. They were sitting on a potentially massive field that geologist Dick Fridley coined the Sleeping Giant. Continental's search for their encore also led them to Elm Cooley. We looked at it and we were, we were equally convinced this is a, a tank. The question is, could it be harvested with horizontal drilling? Continental Resources soon set its sights on North Dakota. There had been other wells drilled in North Dakota. That's one of the reasons we knew that it, it took more than just a horizontal well bore. Using the technology we had at the time and figuring out better ways to do it, something some people would probably give up on and, and not going for, we make it sound easy, mm -hmm. it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Finally, in 2005, they drew the interest of EOG Resources, which was officially assigned the Partial Prospect. On June 6, 2006, EOG hit it big. The Bakken boom had begun. Drilling and leasing activity took off at a frenzied pace in what was to become one of the most prolific oil fields in the United States. I can recall uh, very, very much the afternoon that uh, Bruce Hicks, who was the assistant director of the oil and gas division, uh, coming in my office and saying, uh, Bob Garby wants us to give him a call. They've drilled the partial 136 as far as they can go. Uh, it's flowing so much oil that they're going to have to stop drilling and do a uh, single stage hydraulic fracture job uh, on this well. And of course, uh, that was the first highly commercial well uh, in the Bakken formation in North Dakota. And so it was a jump clear across the, the Bakken formation from one side to the other. Pretty remarkable day, unforgettable day, calling Bob Garvey and, and hearing that, that the well was flowing so hard that they had to stop drilling and they were gonna complete the well right there. Back when the state celebrated its billionth barrel in 1989, the Bakken had only produced a small portion, only 14 million barrels. But the pace of development in the Bakken was rapid. By 2004, production was hovering at 38 million barrels produced. By February 2024, just 20 years later, the Bakken surpassed 5 billion barrels. It was an evolution of thought and technology that, that was just critical and it had to happen. And it was doing these lined multi-stage fracks that really were what we needed to do to crack the code and, and really unleash what you know, he has become, you know, the Bakken of North Dakota. The technological revolution that unlocked the Bakken not only led to this remarkable increase in production, it also unlocked billions of additional barrels of oil once considered trapped. Because of the ingenuity and tenacity of today's Bakken pioneers, North Dakota can look forward to billions more in production from current wells and new drilling.